Yo, I'm Troy. This is Tim Fitness. So a couple of years ago, I uploaded to YouTube a video entitled Science Says the Kettlebell Swing. And it's basically uh, a brief view of some of the available evidence on the efficacy of the kettlebell swing as an exercise intervention. Um, there were some limitations to the evidence that was available more than anything else, just the fact that there wasn't very much evidence available. So uh, what I've tried to do here is go beyond just the kettlebell swing and look at uh, kettlebell training as a whole and see what evidence there is. And uh, as you'll see, this still isn't a great deal of very good, very compelling evidence, but let's move on anyway. So that's me, so just very briefly, I'm a personal trainer, nutrition coach, kettlebell coach, uh, I'm a blogger and a speaker uh, and a lay researcher. So, you know, I'm not a scientist, but I do read a lot of, of research and uh, part of the uh, the writing work that I do requires me to cite scientific evidence. So I do know how to, how to read uh, research and how to cite it properly. Uh, so I mentioned the, the, the previous um, uh, video that I did, uh, and these are some of the uh, uh, references, some of the research that I cited in that. So you've got uh, Lake and Louder 2012, which compared the kettlebell swing versus the jump squat and the measured half squat and vertical jump height. Um, I had 24 trained men aged 18 to 24 over a 12 week period. They either did swings or they did weighted jump squats. Uh, and the outcome was that, you know, th there was a benefit to uh, uh, to kettlebell swings that um, actually the vertical jump improved um, with both the kettlebell swing and the jump squat, uh, but slightly more with the jump squat, as you'd expect. It just makes sense. The uh, kettlebell uh, swing actually showed greater improvements, almost twice as much as the jump squat in terms of max strength, which is surprising because they were using very light kettlebells, you know, 12 to 16 kilogram kettlebells. Um, and this is one of the limitations that we see a lot in, in the research is that, you know, if you're comparing maximal strength using a kettlebell training protocol versus a barbell training protocol, for example, then obviously you're going to be moving greater loads with the barbell. So the kettlebell is not going to be as effective um, you know for developing uh, strength but we, it, it does seem to be effective for training uh, for power um, i would like to have seen this done with better and heavier loads than that to be honest and then the same people lake and louder again in 2012 assessed kettlebell swing um, using 16 24 and 32 kilogram kettlebells um, two sets of 10 uh, in 16 trained males. This was over six months, so slightly longer, but a smaller sample size. And this is a problem with a lot of the uh, uh, the research is that they tend to be the very short uh, trials or very, very sh small sample sizes, which isn't great for extrapolating data points and, and making, you know, uh, creating empirical data um, uh, protocols. And but they concluded it was not optimal for maximal strength development, uh, but was good for power development in athletes. And that just makes sense. You know, I mean, they're more ballistic movements. And, you know, as I say, if you're going to compare the kettlebells with barbells, you're going to get a different outcome in terms of max maximal strength. Um, another one that I looked at was the uh, Coleman et al. in 2017, lumbar pelvic pain thresholds. Uh, Again, light kettlebells. So uh, females are using an eight kilogram and males are using a 12 uh, kilogram. Significant reductions in pain pressure threshold and post-exercise conclusion, potential useful uh, prescription for long-term lower back pain sufferers. And that's largely to do with uh, improvements in core stiffness and uh, uh, back extensor muscular endurance. Um, for more trained well-trained individuals you could go much heavier than that i'm pretty sure of of that it's unfortunate that it's not really been tested clinically um but i'm pretty sure that if you were to do if you know if you're a reasonably fit person and you're in like the uh, the, the post acute uh stage of rehabbing a back injury and you started building up progressively heavier and more kettlebell swings that you know you'd get a much you know, a pretty good outcome in terms of back health, but that's just my my uh, 
theory uh, and my personal experience uh, I can't say that unequivocally because there's no evidence to prove that um, there what was the other one so a couple more here Holmstrup et al in 2016 20 female uh, healthy females 18 to 25 uh, and they had limited resistance training kettlebell experience uh, this was a Tabata protocol, 20 seconds on, 10 seconds off, times 8. Uh, in the original video, there's a, a typo in there. I actually said 2020, but it's not 2020, it's 2010. Uh, and the conclusion was no improvement in sprint speed uh, and a 4% improvement in vertical jump power. So again, we're seeing improvements in power, which makes sense considering that the kettlebell swing is an explosive movement. Um, maybe that would have been better again if these were uh, better trained athletes using a heavier load but you know that's not been tested so we can't say that uh, Fortnite et al 2014 another Tabata versus traditional resistance training uh, protocol so the Tabata the 2010 times 8 versus four sets um, of uh, I think that's four sets of eight reps um, I haven't put it in there but uh, with 90 second rest intervals uh, and you know moderate improvements in vo2 max and blood lactate threshold uh, you know but again a really small uh, trial so anyway I'll, I, I delved into these in a bit more detail on the on the other video um, okay so we also looked at the uh, Stu McGill stuff so this was he was basically looking at the kettlebell swing um, and the I think this yeah the kettlebell swing uh, and the swing to snatch uh, like a hard style snatch um, so the, it says swing and swing with uh, Kim A Kim A is a breathing technique so when uh, Pavel Tatsaline does the kettlebell swing he really squeezes the abs and the glutes and it's a at the top so you kind of like in martial arts when you do that with the punch um, and this just measured muscular activation in, in certain muscle groups and that isn't really a measure of of you know doesn't really tell you what if that's going to improve strength or power or hypertrophy or anything like that hypertrophy and strength are more about mechanical tension than they are just merely uh, muscle activation so difficult to, to to say but it's interesting nonetheless and uh, so their um, their conclusion was that the message for coaches is that kettlebell offers several unique training opportunities for example the opportunity to train rapid muscle contraction relaxation cycles emphasizing posterior chain power de development about the hip uh, and they you know they gave you a caveat that you know because so of the sheer load some people are going to be intolerant to that that movement so um, but again potential there for uh, in, improving um, spine biomechanics using the kettlebell swing okay so uh, I'm just going to get rid of that so I looked at some other stuff and um, so this was a, uh, a research paper that I found from 2014 uh, looking at the kettlebell snatch and and this was the hard style snatch so these were 18 again a really small sample size 18 well-trained female uh, soccer players uh, with kettlebell experience so these were part of a collegiate football team or I say football team uh, I'm from the UK so we call it football over there in the, in the new world you call it soccer um, and they were introduced uh, introduced a kettlebell snatch protocol so it was 12 kilogram kettlebell uh, under the uh, observation of, of a RKC strength coach um, versus a weight training circuit which uh, mostly focused on lower body and core exercises the aerobic capacity was measured in the kettlebell group uh, group and it improved versus the uh, uh, the core weight training group uh, who were basically training for hypertrophy rather than like power or, or uh, high intensity cardiovascular outputs so they gained an aerobic capacity in the kettlebell group uh, significantly more than the, uh, the resistance training group so you know that showed that in this case these 
female athletes improve their aerobic capacity by doing 10 minutes of kettlebell snatches twice a week. So that's a positive outcome, and that's kind of consistent with what we think we already know about the kettlebell. Anyone who's, like myself, who's trained the kettlebell on a regular basis knows that the snatch is a great exercise for power and, and uh, aerobic anaerobic development. Uh, and this is just a tiny little bit of, of research to show you that that is definitely the case. But again, really small sample size, really small uh, study. I'd like to see this replicated more and in larger samples and over greater periods of time. Uh, so this was a, a uh, research review, so the effects of kettlebell training on strength, power and endurance and the results uh, from this paper said that uh, five studies were satisfied, um, satisfied the eligibility criteria and included in the review. So five studies, like if you look at research reviews and meta-analyses on you know, sports nutrition or barbell training, the front squat or something like that, you know, you, you're likely to see tens, if not hundreds of, uh, of uh, research uh, papers that have been cited within that research review. And this is just five, which shows how woeful the, uh, the body of research is on kettlebell training, which really disappoints me. Um, but the population studied um, were, were, were an age range from 18 to 72 years old. Uh, strength me measures for the bench press and back extension uh, with the main effect of the clean and the jerk and certain power measures. Uh, and they improved some explosive strength uh, markers by an average of around 19%, which is pretty good. Uh, they improved postural control um, with uh, which was de demonstrated in one of the studies that they reviewed uh, and kettlebell training did not have an effect on aerobic endurance according to this one so that's contrary to uh, a couple of the previous papers that are cited so and like I say this this is a, a review of five independent uh, papers and that's this is why it's so important to have more compelling evidence, because the more evidence you have, the more data points you can plot and the, the less likely you are to have these these conflicting outcomes here. So one paper says there's an improvement in uh, aerobic capacity uh, and this review of five studies says there's no improvement. So it's a little bit confusing. Uh, so the, the conclusion there, as you can see, was moderate evidence indicates that kettlebell training may be safe and effective for uh, increasing certain functional strength and power measures and may show positive results with posture control, but has been found to be, has not been found to be efficacious in increasing aerobic endurance. So take that as you will. This was a, 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 a little research review that was uh, published in the strength and conditioning journal in 2011 so this is quite an old one um, they found again only six suitable studies and you know again that's just that's just not enough so it's a, there's a really poor level of, of research i keep saying that and this is why i wanted to do this to highlight how how little research has been done on kettlebells and i'd really like to see a lot more i really would um so again their uh, their their conclusion was although there has been a paucity of research to date several recent studies do suggest a potential role for the use of kettlebells in strength and conditioning and then they go on to say that you know there are numerous certifying bodies uh, who can train you up as a coach and if you're seeking out kettlebell training that you should seek out a certified coach to help you with that um, and on the right hand side there the table this is taken from that paper uh, shows you the three exercises that had the most effect in terms of of um, strength outcomes so it's the two arm swing uh, the two arm uh, the one arm or two arm clean and press uh, and then the goblet squat so obviously hip hinge um, a a push pull movement and then a squat which is you know the, these are pretty standard uh, movement patterns for strength training so if you incorporate those into your training uh, with yourself with your clients you're going to get some improvements in in strength development and again this is stuff that we 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 know anyone who's trained with kettlebells for any length of time knows this stuff but it's just good to have like some research to back up those assertions 
Another paper here from, so this was looking at effects of eight week kettlebell training on body composition, muscle strength, pulmonary function, and chronic low grade inflammation in elderly women, women with sarcopenia. And this was quite a recent one now, this is 2018. So this is what, one of the reasons I wanted to do this video in the first place was that the previous video, most of the research was quite old. Um, so this has got a couple of research reviews in here that are a bit more up to date. So this is interesting. So we know uh, from looking at the evidence that resistance training has a positive effect on um, uh, muscle strength and obviously muscle growth and on bone density, which is important for aging populations. You need to be doing resistance training to, in, to uh, stave off the onset of things like uh, sarcopenia as you get older. Um, and so this was a training program that included 11 movements. Those movements are the kettlebell swing, kettlebell deadlift, kettlebell goblet squat, uh, squat lunge, kettlebell row, single arm kettlebell row, uh, biceps curl, triceps extension, two arm kettlebell military press, the Turkish get up and a comprehensive, they were combined into a comprehensive dynamic workout. So they were doing three sets of eight to 12 reps of five of any of those exercises uh, uh, for 60 minutes per session. So a pretty standard, you know, uh, strength and conditioning push pull type uh, routine there, but using kettlebells. So the highlights were that it was a uh, uh, loss of muscle mass and, and degeneration of muscle strength associated with aging amongst elderly, eight week kettlebell training. So again, eight weeks, very short term uh, uh, study here. Eight week kettlebell training signif significantly improved sarcopenia, hand grip and back strength, which are all markers of, of muscular decline in aging populations. After eight weeks kettlebell training, it led to retention effects of the training program and it continued after the 12 week intervention. So for elderly people with sarcopenia, participating in kettlebell training significantly increases the sarcopenia index which is important to know and the good thing about that is that you know uh, if you're training your clients or if, if you're an elderly person yourself um, who's training you, you don't necessarily need to join a gym you can get yourself a kettlebell and you can get the health improvements and training with that uh, and then this was a 2019 review on clinical practice so we're looking at uh, how to incorporate kettlebells into clinical practice for uh, you know post rehab and that kind of stuff. Conclusions: a small number of longitudinal studies, which are largely underpowered and of low method method I can't even say it methodological uh, quality. So, like I've been saying, a small amount of small studies that aren't necessarily that well controlled with very small sample populations, you know, short term studies all the time. So not great in terms of being able to extrapolate that, that evidence that you really want to see. Um, confidence in reported effects is low to very low, which is not good. The strength of recommendation for kettlebell training, improving measures of physical function is weak based on the current body of literature. Uh, further research on reported effects is warranted. I absolutely agree with that. With inclusion of clinical populations and investigations of musculoskeletal conditions common to primary care, uh, there is a need for an externally valid standardized approach for the training and testing of kettlebell interventions, um, which better can in informs the therapeutic use of kettlebells for primary care. So hopefully that is then going to lead on to more uh, more research, which is what I want to see. Uh, I've got another one here, kettlebell exercise as an alternative to improving aerobic power and muscle strength. Um, and this was from 2019 to another recent one, which is the main reason I included it here. So the conclusions here, just the, the the highlights from this one, as a consequence, kettlebell exercise may elicit cardiovascular, neuromuscular and metabolic responses sufficient for improvements in strength, aerobic power and overall physical fitness. For these reasons, many strength and conditioning pro pro professionals have encouraged the use of kettlebell training as a useful tool in order to improve muscular strength, power, maximal oxygen uptake. Finally, a kettlebell practitioner could improve both cardiorespiratory fitness and muscular strength with the same exercise protocol as in um, 
a resistance circuit training uh, style. So it kind of as mentioned earlier, but again, this was only, uh, I think they only cited four or five um, pieces of, of research, which is again, you know, it's pitifully low. It's just not good enough. So basically just to sum it all up and just to confirm, I'm not anti-kettlebell here. I am a kettlebell coach. I train with kettlebells myself. Most of my clients train with kettlebells. And yes, I have seen the interview with Pavel Tatsaline on uh, Joe Rogan. I'm a big fan of Pavel's work. Uh, but sitting there and saying that Russian strongmen have trained this way for uh, decades isn't in itself empirical evidence. It's an anecdote. Yes, we know that it's tried and tested and that, uh, you know, quite often what we do find when we run these trials is that the, you know, the bros and the, the, the old boys that have been doing it for years and years and years by um, trial and error and almost kind of by default have found uh, optimal or near optimal ways of training that, that, that work. So we know that it's safe. We know that it's effective. We just need the science to catch up and prove that and to, uh, and then to fine tune it as well. We need to know like what are the optimal weights? What are the optimal rep ranges? Uh, uh, you know, all, all these kind of uh, parameters, you know, to just to, to be able to say with confidence that that you know everything that we think we know about kettlebell training, everything that Pavel has said, and all the other great Russian uh, kettlebell uh, exponents over the years have said is 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 right, um, and that we can say that with with confidence because science backs it up. And we just need more compelling, more well-controlled studies, and I really wish that that would happen. Um, so in summary, kettlebell training lacks compelling body of scientific literature to support its efficacy. So far, it appears that kettlebell training may be effective for aerobic conditioning, power development for athletes, um, moderate strength gains, probably more so in, in uh, lesser trained individuals, I would say, and may have some cl clinical application for chronic pain, but more evidence is sorely needed. For the most part, a few stick to RKC style recommendations to training protocols, you are at least conducting safe practice, whether that is definitely or definitively the most effective practice remains to be confirmed. I suspect that it's 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 pretty good. Uh, but as I say, I just want to see more research on this just so that we can say 100 percent hand on heart that we're not deceiving ourselves or anyone else here. So there's the references. That's a tiny reference list, which just highlights how how poor this body of research is here. And I'm wrapping it up. So it's been a little bit longer than I wanted. So if you've made it to the end, thank you very much. Uh, please do check out my website, check out my Facebook. So TM Fitness on, on Facebook, uh, TM Fitness UK on Instagram and YouTube, obviously. Uh, and if you've got any questions, please do put them in the box. Please do click like, please do share this around and uh, have an amazing life.